Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome from uh, Indian Academy of Pediatrics Cochin Branch. As you know, Child Care Center, the flagship project of uh, IAP Cochin Branch, is uh, has just completed 25 years of service. And uh, learning disability per se in India is about 5 to 15 percent, as and some su studies have uh, suggested up to 20 percent. And in this regard, we have uh, organized a panel discussion with experts in the field, uh, mainly targeting the school, uh, school going uh, students, parents, and uh, teachers. And I now invite uh, Dr. Abraham K. Paul, Executive Director of uh, Child Care Center, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pramod. Uh, as Dr. Pramod has said, we are having a panel discussion under our piece of IAP Cochin branch and uh, Child Care Center. And as you know, learning disability is a major problem. Comprising about 10% of school children have this problem. Most of them it is unrecognized problem. And uh, we have a Child Care Center, have a multidisciplinary team, comprising of child psychologist, speech and language pathologist, audiologist, special educators, pediatrics, and a psychiatrist. And this has been functioning since 1995. And we have evaluated about 20,000 children with the poor school performance. And these children are doing extremely well with the remediation and the follow up given at Child Care Center. And uh, we at Child Care Center not only do evaluate and remediate children with learning disabilities, but also we conduct various TOTs, sensation programs, and uh, workshops, and also give talks, lectures, etc., to schools. And even we are closely associated with the IAP, and both at the state level and also at the central level, conducting workshops and preparing modules. And today we have a panel discussion on learning disability under the auspices of IAP Cochin Branch and Child Care Center, and we have the team. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ms. Mabel, Shoba, Suja, and uh, Susan from Astor Medi City, and Dr. Jason, uh, the developmental pediatrician at Astor Medi City, will moderate the session. Over to you, Dr. Jason. Uh, thank you. Narayan, want to talk something? Narayan. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Good evening to you all. Uh, today is the third day of uh, Disability Week celebrations. I'm very happy that uh, uh, Child Care Center, IAP Cochin, is conducting a panel discussion on an important topic. Uh, I think without much delay, we'll straight away go to the program. Thank you. I request uh, Dr. Jinsen C. Uni uh, to moderate the session and start the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pramod. I'm uh, uh, extremely uh, happy that uh, the Child Care Center has developed into an organization which uh, is uh, um, a center of excellence for learning disability work. And we have a great team working there. Uh, and it is an opportunity for the Child Care Center to show its mettle. Uh, we have a galaxy of speakers and we hope um, that the uh, parents and teachers who are going to attend to this session will be benefited from the session uh, on learning disability. We uh, are going to talk about uh, every aspect of learning disability during this session, uh, including um, the post-plastic performance program, program then about specific learning disability, how to assess, how it is assessed. Parents need to know what is going to be done to their child. And then there will be something about remediation. So this will cover a lot of areas of learning disability. This is a, a huge topic and it's impossible to cover it in Mana. So please bear with us. Uh, hope that we will be able to cover a few of the topics, major topics in, with learning, learning disorders in children. And uh, we will invite questions at the end. And we hope that we will satisfy your hunger to know more and more about learning problems in children. So we are starting this session with, uh, hope I can, you can see my slides. 
my slide visible? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we're going to start this webinar on learning disability, which is organized for the IEP Disability, uh, uh, for the IEP disability Week. Uh, it's a Silver Jubilee celebration of the Child Care Center, organized by IEP Cochin and IEP Kelasi Brands in the Child Care Center. So first of all, we will talk about post-scholastic performance in general. And we have Suja K. Nair from Child Care Center Kochi to talk on this topic. Now, she has done her MA and PG in management science in a, for a diploma in special education and has been working in the child care center uh, since 2011. Over to you, Suja, for the initial introduction of post classic performance. Thank you, Doctor. Good evening, all. Today, I will be speaking about some of the causes of poor scholastic performance in children. Poor scholastic performance is a common problem faced by most of the, faced by schools, parents, and physicians. Five to 15% of school going children suffer from scholastic backwardness. Unrecognized and unidentified scholastic back backwardness has a lifelong impact on children. Early recognition and adequate remediation is important and can make a good difference in the child's future. Scholastic backwardness can be from the beginnings, that is from very, very beginning young children, or it can be recent in onset, that it can be seen in older children. From beginning means when a child started going to school, that is pre-KG, that he or she finds difficulty in getting alphabets, colors, numbers, uh, shapes, etc. This, if the child is poor in academic from beginning onwards, it can be because of the causes in the child or causes in the environment. Then causes in the child, it can be physical causes like sensory impairment, visual and hearing. Mild to moderate hearing loss in childhood is associated with poor language development, which will affect their academics then chronic uh, visual impairment often unidentified may also cause learning difficulties then chronic health condition like febrile or non-febrile seizures asthma etc hypothyroidism in the case if it is not identified it can also cause learning difficulties then prematurity or low birth weight ne next delayed milestone of general brain development which leads to mental retardation in the in the case of mental retardation their iq is below 70 70. next is the slow learners the, the slow learners have an iq of 70 to 89 the normal iq range is 90 to 109 the slow learners has the ability to all, acquire all academic skills at a rate below that that of the average student the slow learners is but they the slow learners needs more time more re repetition and more resources from the teachers to be successful then development coordinational disorders development coordinational disorder these children has normal or above normal iq their motor coordination difficulty may impact their academic progress, social emotion, and social integration and emotional development. Next is the specific delay in academic skill. That is the specific learning disability or learning disorder, which will affect their reading skill, writing skill, spelling skills, and arithmetic skills. They, these children also have an average or above average intelligence. But these children has a persistent difficulty in the acquisition and use of reading, writing, spelling, and mathematics. Then attention, next is next course, is the attention deficit hyperactive disorder, that is ADHD. These children have inattentiveness in learning, hyperactive, that means unable to sit and study for more than 10 minutes, impulsivity in behavior, their re reaction will be immediate without thinking of its consequences. They may lack in any one or more of the following, that is concentration, communication or interaction, and memory. Inattentiveness is a classic symptom of ADHD. Children with ADHD face problem in carrying out tasks which needs, demands concentration. Because of this, they look for excuses to avoid study. 
five to five, three to five percent of school going children are, are reported to have ADHD. ADHD untreated may lead to contact disorder. Another factor is the emotional disorder like depression, anxiety, or obsessive compulsive traits. Anxiety can be in the form of psychological, in the form of phobia or fear, can be physical in the form of vomiting, stomachache, palpitation, dizziness, etc. This depression and anxiety are difficult to be recognized by parents because it shows up differently by different children. It will affect negatively in their ability to learn and enjoy their time in school. It also affects their working memory, which makes it challenging to retain new information and to recall previously learned information. This will lead to school phobia or school refusal. They began avoiding going to school. This can begin with mixing classes, going home early, and staying home, which can eventually lead to school dropout. Obsessive compulsive traits. Many children seem to have obsessive compulsive traits. These children are very stubborn and rigid. The bright and motivated students also struggle with the obsessive traits. These children are unable to learn like the same way others do because their focus is frequently on their obsession and compulsion. They have a perfectionate tendency. Because of their perfectionate tendency, they may give up the task without completing it perfectly. Conduct disorders. Conduct disorder is a serious behavior and emotional disorders that occur in children and teens. It interferes with the child's ability to plan, stay away from harm, and learn from negative experiences. 3% of children suffer, school going children have conduct disorders. It is seen more in boys than girls. The symptoms vary depending upon the age of the child and whether the disorder is mild, moderate, or severe. It is a conduct disorder falls, and falls under four categories that is, aggressive behavior, that is, physical harm, causing physical harm, bullying, fighting being cruel to others and uh, others and animals using weapons etc then destructive behavior intentionally destroying the property of others or their own deceitful behavior like stealing uh, re repeated lying and shoplifting next violation of rule going against accepted rules of society or engaging in behavior that is not appropriate for person's age these are some of the causes in the child that affect the academic performance. Next is the environmental factors. Environment both at home and in school can affect the academic performances. That is deprived or discordant home environment, lack of adequate facilities in, for studying, like noisy home, lack of encouragement from parents or teachers, parents' illiteracy, TV viewing habit that is spending too much of time in front, in front of TV or using mobile phone, significant life event like a serious death or a serious illness in the, among family members, divorce or separation, conflicts in family, etc. Child abuse, then alcoholic or workaholic parents or next single parents or separated parents. These are some which are in the home that affect causes poor performance in their home. Next is in school. That is recent change of school or media. Some children may study up to fourth standard in Malayalam medium and then shift to from fifth onward they started going to English study. In such cases they may find difficulty with the language. Then over expectations of parents, poor or inadequate teaching methods, overcrowded classroom, teachers insensitivity to problems of children with poor scholastic performance. Recent onset. Recent onset is seen in children about 12 years, that is after eight years. Then, till then, they will be good in studies. After that, we will notice a sudden decline in their academic performance. This can be used to increase interest in extracurricular activities, peer pressure. All adolescents in middle and high school deal with the peer pressure. 
This is how teens learn to get along with others of their own age and eventually learn how to be independent. Then addiction to drugs or smoking. Next is hospitalization for more than one month. And then adolescent, and adolescence problems may be, which may arise due to biological changes or bodily changes. These are the sum of the causes of poor uh, scholastic performance. Then poor scholastic performance leads to repeated failure in the failure, which causes rejection in or frustration in the child. This frustration may cause behavior pro problems and poor self-esteem, thus making the child misfit in the society. Thank you. Aspects of post-classic performance. The, the, the presentation, I'm sure, has showed you that you know what if it's a neuro, neurodevelopment problem, and if one neurodevelopment problem is there, they're going to have many more. You're going to have you have to watch out for all these developments as the child grows. Very good presentation, Suja. So from there we go on to the, the crux of specific learning disability and understanding what this term specific learning disorder is called now. Specific learning disorder. And uh, to talk about this, we'll have Dr. Susan Mary Sakria, who is a relevant pediatrician at uh, Aston Med City. And uh, she has done a MD, BCH at uh, CMC Bellow, and MBBS also. And then she did an IV fellowship in developing pediatrics from CMC Bellow. She's a, a fellow product, and she's worked over there for six years in, in management development disorders in children. She's very experienced in this area. She is very passionate about parental empowerment and inclusion of children and adults in society. What do you, Susan, for your presentation? Thank you, sir. And thank you, Suja, ma'am, for uh, explaining the uh, majority of the conditions that cause poor school performance. So I'll be talking specifically on what is learning disability. So like ma'am said before, for a child who has normal intelligence, uh, there is a mismatch between the child's intelligence and his academic performance, be it reading, writing, or mathematics. When this kind of a mismatch occurs, usually parents tend to label the child as lazy, unmotivated to study, where while they may actually be having a problem. And this is when we suspect specific learning disability. So, uh, this is despite the child being motivated to learn, despite the child having adequate instruction, adequate teaching opportunities or learning opportunities to learn, the child is still having difficulty, significant difficulty and persistent difficulty in academics. This is an invisible handicap because otherwise the child is extremely smart and he will do, any, will do everything for his age or above his age. And uh, this is uh, this being invisible actually is what causes a lot of uh, emotional problems in the child as we will see uh, and uh, this uh, specific learning disability is a neurological disorder that affects the brain's ability to receive process store and retrieve information uh, what are the difficulties that these children have the main and the most common difficulty that the children have is in reading, which is called dyslexia. When it comes to writing, it is called dysgraphia. And in maths, it's called dyscalculia. So the difficulty is that children are unable to pair what they see as the alphabet and the sound that they hear. So this difficulty in pairing is what is actually uh, the underlying cause for uh, underlying difficulty that is seen in children with specific learning disability. They have difficulty linking sounds with alphabets. And so even if they uh, see uh, or know that, for example, uh, rabbit starts with the sound R, they are having difficulty understanding that R and R, uh, the, 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 the writing form or the, the visible form of the sound R is R. So having that difficulty in linking that sound with what they see is uh, the underlying uh, difficulty that they have. They have also difficulty blending sounds. So they have difficulty putting two sounds together. So if, it, if they see the word C-A-T, they may be able to say K-A-T, but not blend them together and make cat. Uh, 
if you ask them to split a word like you say the word uh, hippopotamus it is hippopotamus so there are five syllables there so they have difficulty splitting it in syllables they have difficulty understanding rules of grammar because it all seems very vague to them they have uh, when it comes to writing they have difficulty in orientation of letters as what is shown in the in the slide there uh, there is a difficulty with spacing between the letters in the word between words in a sentence punctuation is a problem and in those children who have difficulty with math they have difficulty with concept of numbers so one important thing that we as parents and teachers need to remember is that no child performs poorly on purpose if a child is performing poorly and is uh, a child's biggest desire is that they uh, they please the adults in their in their life so if a child has uh, is not doing well there is always an underlying reason and particularly uh, if a child is otherwise of normal intelligence um, suja ma'am did cover beautifully the various various reasons for poor scholastic performance and if there is a significant discrepancy we need to suspect specific learning disability so coming to some early signs speech delay is something that is seen in a lot of children who have specific learning disability when we come to reading we realize that they are difficulty reading they will read word for word or they will need their finger to point where they are reading because they tend to miss lines they tend to miss pronounce words and uh, they also have problems with omissions and substitution so they will say one word instead of another word for no they may read on for was they will read saw so there are lots of uh, so if you can just move on sir to the to the slides yeah they have confusions with the shapes of alphabets like b can be read as d p can be read as q and lot of mispronunciation that happens all these actually affect a child's ability to read out loud and they and they also uh, end up uh, getting uh, uh ridiculed and humiliated in class because of all the difficulties and this leads on to the various other emotional difficulties that are there that we see in children with specific learning disability when it comes to writing again reading it is not just uh, reading the words but even when they read something they have difficulty comprehending what it is that they have read they are able to recall it and understand it better when it has been read out to them so when it comes to answering questions they may read it they will finally learn how to read they may read it but what exactly did they read is difficult for them to figure out writing problems are also common so it can be due to the abnormal grip it can be because of uh, they have uh, difficulty in the visual spatial orientation and so they uh, write the wrong letters they write they have mirroring of letters seen unable to copy from the board when they are copying from the board the spellings go wrong or when they are copying from their neighbors also the spellings go wrong they put it in in uh, in wrong order all these are the various writing problems that they see that we see in children and uh, when it comes to mathematical problems again uh, we see that they continue to count sir if you can just move on the slides yeah so uh, yeah uh, writing again inverting letters putting it in wrong order they add letters where they feel like it is again because they are, they do not understand that uh, what they see and what they hear are correlated that that is where the difficulty is when it comes to maths older children also they have difficulty they they try and make it very uh, they use their fingers to count when it uh, they have difficulty in in uh, counting in sense that they'll be able to say from 1 to 10 by heart but if you give them uh, and ask them to take three spoons and come take five glasses and come they have difficulty in actually understanding what that means when it comes to statement problems reading it understanding what is the function that needs to be used that is a, that is a difficulty what they have and even if they do do the correct math uh, in the rough column by the time they copy it into the fair area they uh, misplace the numbers so they have directional problems again so the example given here 35 plus 25 what this child has done is that he has added the 3 and 5 and 2 and 5 instead of the other way around and there also he has written ulta so it is uh, it is a problem with again uh, visual spatial orientation that is there and and the concept the underlying concept of maths so this irrespect this can very easily uh, because otherwise they are very smart parents and teachers say that they are being careless they are not paying attention but this is a genuine difficulty that they have what are the other features that they see 
so if you can go on so they can have problems with the fine motor movements so they are generally very clumsy and uh, so uh, even things like threading beads or carrying multiple glasses are things that they have difficulty with we'll see that in the in their life um, so the next slide please sir yeah and because of this difficulty they end up employing various work avoidance tactics like sharpening pencils they look for books they expend a lot of energy trying to learn it is kind of like they are running a race but they are wearing heavy leaden suits or they have like a ball and chain tied to their leg and so they can't run they are starting off with a disadvantage and then they are not able to run forward because of that so they feel extremely tired because they have to use a lot of mental uh mental strength and mental concentration to be able to learn something that comes very easily to other people and uh, because of this they end up feeling frustrated more because they have a normal iq so they realize that they are very different from from those who are around this the things that come easily to others comes to them very very difficult so they become frustrated they get angry because no one is understanding their difficulties and slowly they lose their interest in studies and it up uh, appears outside as aggression rage and uh, they uh, become destructive in accord along with this along with all these behavioral issues that happen because of the problem with learning disability itself the children with learning disability are also prone for other disorders ma'am had said earlier about adhd which is very commonly seen in around 80% of children with a specific learning disability they tend to they have adhd also and without managing adhd which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder without managing that any amount of remediation for learning disability alone doesn't help they can have anxiety disorders as anxiety disorders can be specific only to uh, performance in school like reading anxiety performance anxiety or can even be generalized anxiety disorder where they are just anxious about everything because they don't have the confidence they don't seem to be able to do well uh, it, it, despite what they do so they they become anxious and then it affects their sleep and moves on to a disorder psychosomatic disorders are also very common because they end up of because of their anxiety they end up with stomach pains headache vomiting dizziness and uh, it we do not find in any medical cause for these but on evaluation we realize it is because they have a learning disability and these children they are more more easily uh, more vulnerable to peer pressure because uh, they want to feel good about themselves they they want to be able to they want to be accepted by their peers and since they can't keep up with them academically they try and do whatever it is that their friends do and so these children are very easily manipulated very easily pushed into substance abuse and addiction by following their peers so the important thing and i'm sure that the speakers after me will be concentrating on this also is that we identify their strengths children with learning disability do have a lot of strengths they are uh, more, they have there are multiple intelligences that we have it's not just academic intelligence and there are numerous famous people who are dyslexics and who have done really well in life be in the field of acting like like tom cruise and abhishek bachchan or even making movies like uh, steven spielberg scientists like uh, uh, edison and uh, albert einstein all these people had dyslexia but because they tapped into their strengths and were able to work on them they have become successful so find the unique strength of your child who has a learning disability and take them forward on that they will do well in life and always remember that if a child can't learn the way we teach that is where remedial training comes in uh we should teach them the way they learn and they learn through various techniques it is not just reading and writing so make use of their multiple intelligences be aware that uh, of the early signs of learning disability so that you can identify it in your child teachers have a very big role to play because still child goes to school uh, not much of reading and writing happens at home but early on itself if we can identify learning disability a lot can be done that these children bloom like uh, beautiful flowers in the garden thank you so much thank you susan for that lovely presentation you have made this uh, such a extensive topic you have covered in this short time as uh, we had uh, suggested you should do 
uh, I think the message is clear that uh, learning disability, the children have a almost averaged above average intelligence. And therefore, a classical history of learning disabled child is that they're very good in the LKG, UKG. And by the time they come to the first standard, second standard, there is a duration. It's the parents like a, like a bolt from the blue. And uh, they don't know what's happening. So it is because these children are so, in, the rest of the brain is normal. They're able to mask many of the disabilities through their are biting or their the, uh, journey becomes more extensive. That is something that we must understand and uh, help these children out. Empathy is so important. You know, most of these mothers say that they're very good orally. Uh, you ask them, they'll tell all the answers with nothing. They, they're on paper the exams. That's a classic history. Thank you so much, Susan, for that lovely presentation. So now we'll have uh, uh, the assessment. Another huge topic on how to assess a child with learning disability. And for this, we have uh, Mabel Mendes, who's uh, done a BA in special general in special education, MA in history. Diploma in Learning Disability, and she's been working in the child case, and she's one of our, our stout uh, um, uh, warriors in the child case center. She's been there with us for 21 years. Over to you, Mabel, for presentation on assessment. Good evening. Thank you, Doctor. Today, I'm going to take a talk on assessment of learning disability. Parents and teachers are confused and worried when they come across children with learning difficulties. Most of these children are wrongly branded as lazy or stubborn and are punished unnecessarily. A good diagnostic assessment can confirm whether the child is having learning disability or not. It gives a clear picture of the child problem and parents are relieved that it's not the fault of the child rather due to some neurological deficit in the brain. Assessment help to gather relevant information about an individual area of strength and challenges and to determine whether he or she may have a learning disability. Assessment report help teacher to plan remedial program accordingly. Assessment motivates the child to learn and it helps to improve the child's self-esteem. Assessment is done by a multidisciplinary team consist of psychologists, special educator, social worker, speech and language pathologist, pediatrician, and psychiatrist. Assessment should be done with the consent of parents. Psychologists, special educator, social worker collect the detail of child during the intake or case history session. A structure interview is done with parents to understand the parental perception of the child and his problem in specific areas of academic, child behavior and activity. In the intake session, first we check the background history of parents to know whether they have history of learning problems. Then coming on to personal history, we check the child had any neurological insult or brain injury, whether the child is going through any emotional stressors like domestic violence, child abuse, loss of family members, etc. Then we check the development history with the parents to see whether they have any problem during the prenatal, natal, and postnatal period. Then we check the developmental milestones like head control, crawling, sitting, walking, talking, etc. in the normal range. If there's a lag in any area, it's an indicator for learning problem. Then coming on to history of illness, we check whether the child has seizure disorder, vision or hearing problem. The two area in motor development, that is gross motor skill like running, jumping, walking and fine motor skill like pincer grasp, holding a pencil, buttoning, shoelacing, etc. are normal because problem with fine motor coordination affect the child's writing skill like reluctant to write, slow, illegible handwriting. Next, coming to speech and language, see whether expressive language and receptive language are adequate for the age. When taking the education history, we collect from parents the detail of present mark profile, their previous performance, teachers report about the child's study routining, effort taken, nature of inputs at home, nature of difficulty in academic skill like reading, writing, spelling, and arithmetic. Note down the error pattern in this area. 
we inquire about the attention problem at school and at home situation because most of these children with learning disability will have either attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactive disorder which interfere with learning and behavior in behavior we check whether they have aggressiveness that is uh, uncontrolled anger temper tantrum stubbornness disobedience see if they have context and emotional problems like lying stealing tendency addiction to mobiles those uh, drugs etc then uh, we go, after the intake session we go on the test for intellectual assessment psychological assessment is done to check the intellectual ability of the child the weschler series of intelligent tests are most widely used the test we used in the center for intelligent is the weschler's intelligence scale for children that is wisp for 5 years to 16 years the malins intelligence scale for indian children misic indian adaptation of wisp that is for children 6 year to 15 years and these both these stress comprised of verbal and non verbal performance scale for um, bigger children we use the adult weschler's adults performance intelligence scale that is wapis next is uh, screening test for small children screening test is done they are the sidin form board test the wineland social maturity that is vsms indian adaptation by dr aj malin and developmental screening test that is dst this screening test are used to measure mental age social age and developmental age for young children next uh, next is the academic skill assessment for that we use informal testing materials developed by child care center under academic skill we have the preschool assessment uh, reading writing spelling assessment max assessment and assessment on development and coordination disorder next under preschool assessment this is done for children uh, below 6 years of age we have the pre academic skill and the fine motor skill here we check whether the child knows to match object shapes size uh, able to do puzzles uh, knows number concept able to count up to 10 Uh, able to name basic colors shapes letters and numbers in fine motor coordination we check whether the child knows to do scribbling able to scissor snips do beading in shade stroke uh, whether the pencil grips are adequate then copy shapes cut on line shapes they able to do tracing coloring copying they uh, able to write letters and numbers next Uh, under reading assessment uh, we use graded word list for reading assessment and we assess the uh, whether the child get the following skill like phonemic awareness or segmentation that is knowing the letters sound of letters then able to recognize letter uh, decoding of word attack means they able to read the printed word sight words means words which we read through repeated seeing or sight so we check whether the child know to read sight words then reading of words that is uh, they able to read words sentences and paragraph that through that we check the fluency in reading next is pace of reading whether they are reading slowly letter by letter reading or word by word reading then we check uh, whether they able to observe punctuation marks like comma full stop coming on to comprehension we check whether the child uh, know word understand words sentence level and uh, whether they able to answer direct indirect and inferential questions the common error analysis we find in reading are addition omission substitution repetition reversal hesitation guess reading letter by letter reading or word by word reading the example for reading some of the examples are they read uh, house for home hat for hate saw for was etc etc next coming to spelling assessment we give a graded spelling list for 
doing the to assess the spelling ability of the child here we uh, assess whether the child knows the consonants and consonants blends whether they know the vowels digraphs and diphthongs the digraphs are two letter they form a single sound that is sh the etc and diphthong are two a combination of two vowels they form a sound uh, we hear the sound of the first vowel that is like boil oil example boy etc then phonemic words and non phonemic words uh, we check whether the child knows uh, phonemic and non phonemic words then whether they know the rules uh, the like the plural rules the root words prefix suffix silent e silent consonants etc then the common error analysis we find in spelling are the uh, phonological substitution doubling addition omission insertion and the error pattern we find here are they write bet for bat uh, shoppy for shop that is addition of letter tank tank for tank again uh, for doubling they doesn't know the doubling rule so for swimming they write only one name next is handwriting here in handwriting we assess uh, whether the child able to uh, how the letter formation are the size of letters whether they able to uh, space between whether there is spacing between words they look whether they able to write on line and the speed of writing and how they keep the paper next is coming to written expression written expression um, we check uh, here we check whether the child the, there are six uh, five skills in written expression we check whether the child has fluency that is number of words written in syntax uh, the how they construct sentences and vocabulary is number of new words how many new words they use here and structure is the grammar whether they know the grammatical rules whether they are putting all the capitalization and in content we check the main idea and how they are organizing the content and uh, the common error we find in written expression are they use few, few vocabulary repetitive words in complete sentences spelling error grammar mistake and poor punctuations in max assessment we assess whether the child knows number concept basic computation like addition subtraction multiplication and division whether they know whether they know place value fractions decimals and percentage and coming to mathematics we check whether they are getting algebra and geometry and the common error analysis in mathematics is most of the children write left to right addition difficulty with borrowing and regrouping learning mathematical tables difficulty with word problem and estimation skill difficulty in doing est estimation in maths after doing the academic assessment uh, those children who are having difficulty in speech we do the speech and language assessment which is done by a speech and language pathologist Uh, here we assess whether the child's expressive language, receptive language, and whether they have any misarticulations. Other associated disorder like attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, anxiety, and obs obsessive traits are also evaluated in a center. And after doing all the analysis, we uh, analyze. the data and come to a conclusion that is a diagnosis whether the child is having learning disability or not then we counsel the parents give remedial guidance to parent as well as the child then some children need pharmacological management then we refer to the doctor they need medicines then report will be given to school doctors and parents final finally periodic evaluation is recommended to monitor the progress and to see the child is overcoming the difficulty thank you thank you mary <laughs> now everybody realizes how difficult it is to assess a child you know so many areas that that the assessor needs to know so many areas that they should be good at good at in english in maths malayalam and everything they should be really 
to understand what the problems are is quite a quite a task. And uh, I think the first time that the patient, the child comes to the the center, there will be a lot of anxiety while doing this uh, uh, process because you don't know what's going to happen next because they never like to be to hospital. So there is a problem of um, the the uh, SSE finding uh, developing a rapport with this child. You know, the, so when you're doing a, an assessment, I, I presume the special educators must be very, very friendly with these children to make them comfortable while doing this test. So it's a it's a laborious process. Maybe you'll do it in one or two sessions if the child is learning disability with an attention deficit disorder. Very good presentation. Thank you so much, Mabel. Now we go on to remediation for specific learning disorders. And for this, we have Shobha Maman, who's uh, done her MSc in Home Science and BA in Special Education. She's worked as a teacher and a principal of Ikan Valley Learning Center and is currently working as a special educator at Child Care Center. Over to you, Shobha, for your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Jason. Good evening, all. Today, I'll be talking about remediation in children with specific learning disability. At a basic level, remediation means teaching again the content that, that students previously failed to learn. It should be individualized as far as possible. Remedial session should start with activities which a child can easily achieve since this will act as a motivator. Now, remediation in reading disability. Specific reading disability or dyslexia is an unexplained delay in reading in a child of average or above average intelligence. Remedial session for a preschooler should start with teaching concepts. Child should be able to match, identify, and name colors and shapes. The child should know the difference between big and small, long and short, more and less, etc. The child should know rod counting and meaningful counting up to 10. And grouping numbers and number identification also up to 10. The child should know whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And con concept of money is the child should know the value of money. Okay, next coming to pre-reading and pre-writing skills. When the child is reading a book, he should know the front and back of the book. He should read from left to right and top to bottom and also turn pages correctly. Next. The child should know to spell own name, sings and reads A, B, C, D, voluntarily scribbles and draws, develop finger muscle control, develop correct writing position of body, arms, hand, paper and pencil. The intervention areas in reading are prerequisite skills, which I have mentioned just now, then phonological awareness, that is a sound structure of words used for speaking and listening. Due to lack of time, let me explain a couple of the activities. There are so many activities to improve phonological awareness, but I will explain a couple of them. Word oddity. Word oddity is say three words and have the child select the odd word. Example, tall, ball, and dog. The child should know that dog is the odd word. Sentence segmentation. Say a phrase or a sentence and let the child say the number of words in that sentence. Example, the cat is fat. The child should say that the sentence has, this sentence has four words. Then next is letter recognition. Next. Letter recognition. The child should know all the letters in the alphabet. Phonemic awareness, there is an understanding that spoken words are, and syllables are made up of sequences of speech sounds. Letter sound corresponding, teaching individual letters and corresponding sounds. Then decoding or word attack skills. And that should be taught in the order. Consonant vowel words first, then vowel consonant words, then consonant vowel consonant words, then consonant, vowel, consonant, E words, then consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant words. Then blends, blends should, first of all, final blends should be for 
dot and then initial blends and then consonant consonant vowel consonant consonant blends then digraph two consonant sounds together produce a new sound example s and h together produce the sound sh then f t then diphthong when two vowels go out walking the first one does the talking that is the long sound of the first vowel is heard for example meet m e a t meet only the long sound of e is heard float only the long sound of o is heard syllabication the child is asked to read the word by bre breaking into respective syllables now sight word reading sight words are words which should be read at sight without effort example on the and etc they need to be acquired through repeated reading in any book 20% of the words are sight words and teach two words per day now coming to reading comprehension reading comprehension is comprehending the information provided through different sensory modalities and answering the questions related to the topic it can be as simple as naming an object or maybe as complex as giving explanation to a particular phenomenon and the intervention areas are reading sentences and paragraphs then pace of reading observing punctuation marks then comprehension at word level and sentence level then answering direct questions indirect questions and inferential questions while asking questions the question should be specific and brief do not put a long introduction for a question question should be appropriate to age and mental ability of the child the question should be relevant and connected with the concerned topic ask cause and effect questions now spelling remediation spelling involves attention to all letters in a proper sequence to learn spelling students must remember the sounds of letters and how to blend the letters into words and the intervention areas are phonological awareness addition of letters omission of letters blending sounds vowel teaching vowel sounds teaching both uh, the long and short sound of vowel sounds then digraph diphthong spelling rules and silent letters then remediation in writing writing disability or dysgraphia is a difficulty with handwriting fine motor coordination organization and presentation of materials of written page and the intervention areas in handwriting are activities to improve motor coordination letter formation letter size space between words letter alignment line quality slant and speed steps for improving handwriting scribbling and pencil grip teach the child to place the thumb and fingers approximately 1 inch from the point of the pencil then tracing dot joining copy and completion of figures complete the figures when portions of them are missing then intervention areas in written expression dictation writing letters words and sentences as they are spoken then sentence formation writing sentences based on pictures with and without clues then giving jumbled sentences then intervention is in sentence completion complete the sentence when the beginning part is given complete the sentence when the end part is given and close procedure fill up the passage with the words given then syntax includes incorrect verb and pronoun usage vocabulary is a list of new words structure includes grammar capitalization and punctuation and content includes idea organization and accuracy remediation in arithmetic disability this calculia is a disability resulting in difficulty in learning and comprehending arithmetic 
the student may also have difficulty in the sequential process. Now the prerequisite skills needed are position concepts. Example, the child should know what is above, below, in and out, etc. Then classify colors, size and shape. Comparing, like more than, less than, same, etc. Then counting from zero to null. He should not rote counting as well as meaningful counting from zero to ten. Then ordinal numbers like first, second, third, etc. And measurements, larger, smaller, taller, shorter, etc. Then the intervention areas in dyscalculia involves the prerequisite skills, number concept, place value, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fraction, decimal, percentage. Some of the word problems clues. So that's why doing word problems, there are certain clues. While doing addition, how many in all? How many all together? What is a sum? What is a total? And while doing subtraction, that is taking a, find the difference, what is left, and what is the balance? <coughs> doing, while doing multiplication, what is the product and how many all together? Then doing division, that's taking equal sets apart. Find the average, find the quotient, what would one be, what if shared equally? And while doing word problems, the following skills should be taught, reasoning skills. That is the ability to reach conclusion on which operation to be used. Estimation skills, that is mental calculation and generalization skills at the application level. Then other areas of intervention are completing notes in class, writing down instructions given so that it is not forgotten, prioritizing study activities, Organizing daily activities like setting a timetable, self-monitoring, responsibility for study and study skills. Current provisions available for exams are some of the provisions offered by educational board like CBSC, ICSC, state board and NAISR, extra time for board exam, additional one hour or 30 minutes for each subject. No reduction of marks for spelling and grammatical errors. Drop a difficult subject and choose an optional subject. Use of scribe for children with dysgraphia. Use of calculator for children with dyscalculia. And the school principal should forward a detailed psychoeducational assessment report by recognized professionals specifying the areas of difficulties to complete the exam. And now finally, some tips for parents. Use encouraging statements like, keep trying, you can do it. Then expose the child to social situations. Read out stories to improve their vocabulary and imagination. Limit screen time to less than an hour daily. Keep in constant touch with teachers. Know where the child is at all times. Supervise homework, assign chores like have the child help you set the table, enforce, enforce a bedtime, not later than 9.30 p.m. Do not be afraid to set and enforce limits. Like you can say, you may go and play when your work is done. Make the study environment non-stressful, pleasant and calm. Give the child a healthy breakfast and start another great day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shobha. It's a lovely presentation on remediation. Another difficult area for children with learning disability. I think that they go through a monotonous process and it is the effort of the special educators to make it interesting for these children. And uh, because otherwise, by the time they reach class nine or 10, can be quite a distressing affair for some children because they have to work much, much harder than the children with the normal learning abilities cope with their educational requirements. 
So now uh, I don't think we have much questions on chat box. Uh, we, uh, any questions that uh, anyone has, can you can unmute and ask. Otherwise, uh, uh, we. What is uh, Dr. Susan? What is your experience with learning disability as they grow into an adult? Dr. Susan, can you mute yourself? Unmute. Yeah. So, so as they grow older, what uh, what happens? Is that what you are? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so uh, generally what we see is that children who have not received remediation, who have not been diagnosed early, who uh, come at, uh, at uh, middle school level or at high school level, what we see is that because they have been uh, constantly uh, harassed at home because of their academics, or uh, because uh, the teachers uh, have not been sensitive enough and have called them out in class. They actually come to us quite, we have a set of people who come broken and a set of people who come rebellious, saying that I am this way, this is all I can do, I don't want to do this anymore. So they either fight with their parents, they come in that sense, or they have come saying that I don't know what to do. I am very depressed. I am anxious. I'm not able to do anything. I don't have friends. I don't uh, want to do anything. I just want to sleep the whole day. I feel ill when I go to school. So these are the various problems that we see teenagers coming in. So particularly the, the, uh, the adolescent period or rather that when they become teenagers, what every child wants is to be... Uh, is to develop an identity, to develop, uh, to have uh, uh, self-confidence and self-esteem. And children with learning disabilities, unfortunately, what happens is that parents are more focused on academics. So this child may be very good at sports, but they are not allowed to go out and play sports because they are not studying. So again, the opportunities for the child to shine in uh, in areas that come easily to them is not given to them. And this again further hampers their emotional development. It, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, it, 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 it kind of keeps them bound. So uh, behavioral issues, and uh, again, there is a higher chance of depression. There is definitely genetics involved because you see that there is an overlap in genes with uh, ADHD and specific learning disability. There's an overlap in genes with depression and specific learning disability. But when they are not remediated, when it is not being seen and addressed, we see that these children tend to go into depression and anxiety or they go the other way. They become rebellious, aggressive, go into uh, conduct disorder when they are older, oppositional defined disorder when they are younger. And there's a lot of psychosocial emotional problems that come in. Uh, the uh, difficulty if it's diagnosed early, found early and treated early, many of them definitely go on to do very well, even uh, in their academics also. It is not just that a child who, who has dyslexia will never ever do well academically. That is not what it means. They just need a different mode of learning. It is not just pen and paper. You do uh, maybe tactile, uh, like children, uh, what one common thing that I, I tell my parents is, if, especially if they have uh, BD confusion, I tell them to take clay and make the alphabets out of B and D. So you're using your sense of touch, you're making it big. And when that is made, it is more easier for them to remember. There are other tricks and tips that are all taught at young age so that they are able to do relatively well academically. But more than that, to find out what their strength is and to work on it. Susan, Suja, what do you, what is your experience been after joining Child Care Center? Have you, uh, has it changed your life dealing with these children? Uh, unmute, unmute. My daughter has learning problem. I recognized her, remediated her. Now she is in fifth standard and she can cope up with everything. They go getting above 90% now. Because of early intervention and remediation, I can make a big difference in her. That's great. Uh, Mabel, 
what is the uh, you know when you do an assessment what are the things that you ensure uh, how do you how do you uh, uh, counsel a parent or a, or a child before you do an uh, assessment for learning disability unmute unmute able unmute Uh, after doing the assessment we come to a diagnosis doctor uh, after looking getting the level of the child we will uh, talk with the parents for his difficulties and we give detailed uh, guidelines measure how to help the child at home as well as how he can be helped by teachers in school no i would understand what i want to ask you is that how do you give it uh, A report. How do you say a report? I mean, how do you say the child is learning disability? What level? How do you as uh, uh, you know? Are there norms for each uh, age group or for each class that this child? Yeah, there are, there are norms. How much below that should we would you call it learning disability? What is uh, uh, most of the children? Uh, they will have to, they be two grades below their grade level. Then we do the IQ assessment. We get a clear picture. The learning disabled children have average IQ. So when we say the child is learning disabled, first we check the IQ level. Then uh, when we do the academic session, we uh, see all the error patterns in reading, writing. Then we get a clear picture of the error pattern. They have that type of errors. do you want the, the, the students to bring their notebooks and answer books and things like that each time they yeah, come yeah we check their books we talk, ask the uh, talk with their teachers parents uh, bring all the uh, information they, they collect from schools and they talk, uh, talk with us dr shobha uh, shobha can you tell me uh, remediation how do you start what is the principles of remediation you know that uh, it's not it's not tuition it's not tuition no so what are the principles of remediation that uh, you would like to tell uh, parents and teachers unmute 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 you have to do repeated teaching that's the first thing what uh, yeah what like, level how like, do you decide what level to start what uh, we uh, we uh, will get the uh, level from the assessment report and uh, from that report we start with the remediation and you have to do it continuously how do till you decide the goal is achieved and you have to pay, uh, prepare an iep that is individualized education program the, in that we set the um, annual goals and specific goals annual goals are to be attained in one year and specific goals in uh, two months or three months whatever it is and that and is how we do the remediation program how often do you call these children over for remediation once a week is is there enough facility for all our children to get remediation at once a week <laughs> now we are doing like that what about is there any possibility for group uh, sessions in for learning disability a uh, group one one, one, is, one, to one, uh, one to one teaching uh, one, one on one is uh, better than group remediation i'll recommend only one on one remediation uh dr susan what is the role of uh, resource rooms uh okay i resource rooms uh, it is not entirely equipped for children with learning disability resource rooms are more for for uh, what my understanding of resource room is that it is more for children who have uh, mm, who who either have or either slow learners or those who have a, a mild uh, intellectual disability or for other conditions the problem again that uh, i've seen in schools is that once a child goes to a resource room 
they are thought as having a low intelligence, which that is not the case in children with specific learning disability. So in schools, actually what uh, is recommended is that they are part of the main class itself. And uh, either they are given more uh, oral teaching is done, or they are asked questions orally rather than making them read. And again, when their answer papers are corrected, when you know that the child has a learning disability, not to deduct marks for uh, spellings, not to use the red ink pen, because that kind of really puts a child down, seeing so many red ink marks, but uh, trying to, to assess the child's knowledge overall. Because these children learn very well through hearing, through other modalities, using, using uh, visual, audiovisual techniques which is now very common. We have so many smart classrooms that are there. So uh, uh, my uh, advice and my, uh, thing, my uh, outlook is that these children should not be secluded from the class. They should not be sent out for, uh, for a specific uh, learning disability because they can catch up with the others in class. It's just in their reading and writing that they have a problem. Uh, Shobha ma'am, wouldn't you agree with that? Mabel, uh, see, there's a question here. See, Child Care Center is doing a lot of teacher training programs. And uh, the question is, are there any programs to create awareness and teachers for early detection and referral for remedial training? From Ginny. Ginny has asked this question. Uh, we have, okay. How effective has been our outreach programs to schools? More and more children, uh, they are sending more and more children to our center for assessment. And uh, teachers are taking care of the children in that they are also sending children to a center. So what is the program that we did? We did a, can, we, can I add uh, to that? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. See, in fact, uh, we had a program of a learning friendly in Alam district. And uh, there we wanted to give a training to all the 350 schools in the district. And uh, due to some uh, problems with the teachers union, we could uh, contact only 107 schools. That is very unfortunate. So uh, after giving training to two to three children from each 107 schools, we could train 350 teachers in total. In fact, we wanted to train all the 350 school teachers. So that came to a halt. Then what we did was we did an outreach program wherein we try to go to all schools. Our team went to about uh, 10 to 15 schools and we went there with the audiovisual aids and uh, still we are planning and we are ready to go to any school where they want to have a program. And even we can still continue to have a program in child care center if some schools wants it. Uh, Maya Bose from uh, has asked, does child care center do online remedial sessions and uh, uh, with some parental training too? Uh, they see Nibma has, uh, the Maya Bose, they have uh, serious limitations to resources available even with early identification. So what are our uh, uh, ability to reach out with um, online programs and what are the limitations of resources for early identification? As of now, we are not able to do that because we are quite busy there with about five to six children every day, new cases. So that uh, makes our staff busy there. So as of now, we are not able to go for an online program. And uh, learning disability assessment, uh, actually we cannot do it perfectly on an online basis. We want a physical uh, assessment. So that is the limitation for this particular program. Um. Shobha, can you tell us what is uh, uh, you found you come to learn child care center very recently? Uh, maybe two years back or one year back? Uh, uh, unmute, unmute. One year. Uh, yeah, one year now. So, what is your experience in Pigan Valley was and uh, child care center? What are the differences? And uh, you know what what are the facilities available? What are the resources uh, that Pigan Valley had compared to child care center? And what what improvements can child care center do? In Chalke, in Vignan Valley, we had so many children. I, I was able to mingle with children. I like teaching. 
teaching is my passion so I, so that's why i joined vignan valley and i enjoyed their uh, teaching children with learning disability here we are doing only the assessment and intervention there's one on one remediation there you can see the uh, same children again and again and uh, um, i like both Okay. I enjoy Vikyan Valley. <laughs> I like this. I also. like working here also. <laughs> so, what is, so, so, what is your experience with NIOS? Any idea of NIOS? Your child is growing. Uh, would you send your child for NIOS? Uh, uh, and have you checked out other areas where NIOS is available in 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 Arunachalam? Unmute. 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 She is doing the regular school, sir. She is going the regular, not NIOS. Who has experience with NIOS? I Anybody? Okay. Uh, Jini has asked one more question, saying, "Could you explain step by step procedure to be done once a child is suspected to have LD? When the child is studying in a regular school, undergoing remedial sessions, what?" when can he join nios now that's why nios is something that uh, we must know a lot about you know it's the most uh, the greatest network of nios is available in india and there are so many centers to nios i think uh, shobha's uh, the bigan valley was doing nios uh, syllabus no, isn't it shobha yeah so uh, the question is could you explain step by step procedure to be done once a child is suspected of ld NIOS to join and to register with NIOS you need to complete 13 years or 8th standard and you can choose subjects uh, uh, like uh, the regular subjects and also they offer subjects like data entry uh, or home science painting drawing uh, lighter subjects and you can choose only english is compulsory you can choose other subject from the list they have given and um, uh, they nios will conduct board exams in october and also in april there are two board exams every year two board exams are conducted every year in october and in april and once you register with nios you need to complete the course only uh, within 5 years i believe the uh, number of attempts are not shown on the certificate uh, and can no, yeah. and can a, a child uh, not shown in the certificate that's an advantage and can a, a child uh, write an exam whenever he feels he's ready for exam yeah he can what write is, the first exam only after one year after that's after registering with nios and then he can write when he is prepared now is nios equivalent to cbsc and slc yeah yeah students can go for higher studies they can go for medicine engineering and uh, uh, fashion designing and nothing they can go after nios okay i think that we have finished our questions here if no i have a question sir um sir uh, yeah. yeah uh, good evening uh, madams and sirs and good evening to all my co participants so one of the causes of learning disability is uh, chromosomal anomalies especially 3 6 and 15 if i am not wrong and uh, it is more prevalent in males than in females so one of the reason i studied is like you know uh, in males we have only one x one x chromosome and uh, gen gene mutation on the x is more likely to have an effect in males than in females so can someone throw some light on this susan can you answer that Uh, Chiranjeevi, so what exactly is your question in the sense that, yes, uh, there are definitely uh, genetic reasons for learning disability, uh, but uh, I am sorry, I did not uh, get yeah, your question. Actually, I mean, uh, uh, one of the causes of uh, learning disability is chromosomal anomalies, and it is more prevalent in males uh, than in females. And one of the reasons for that is like it is there is a gene mutation on the X chromosome. That is the reason why you know we have more uh, uh, learning disability cases in men. I mean, males than in females. So, just what would like to know, in, and I, I did not understand what that what that means. Okay, 
So uh, we are going into a little bit of genetics. Uh, when you have uh, two X chromosomes in a female, one X chromosome is what we call inactivated. Okay, so uh, generally when there are two X chromosomes and one when there is a, a genetic abnormality in one of the X chromosomes, it is more likely that that chromosome is going to be inactivated in all the cells so that the normal X chromosome functions. Whereas in males, because they have only one X chromosome and if there is a genetic abnormality in that, it is going to manifest. Now, this doesn't mean that every child with learning disability has these abnormalities. It is just a very small subset of children with learning disability in whom you can identify clear-cut clear uh, uh, differences in the loci in the genes or mutations in the genes. Now, if you do find that a child has this genetic abnormality, it again, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it affects the future generations. Again, uh, if it is the guy, if it, if it is uh, um, a boy, a male who has learning disability and the gene affected X gene is there, this X gene is going to go to the daughter. Okay. Now, again, it depends on whether this is going to be inactivated or activated in the daughter, that the daughter is going to have symptoms of learning disability. May, she may be having only mild learning disability, or she may not have any features of learning disability if that particular chromosome is inactivated. But from the boy being an XY, if he's going to have a boy child, is a Y chromosome that's going to go, so that child is not going to be affected. So what we generally say in terms of genetics is that if, uh, if a man has a, a learning disability with the effect on the X chromosome, he can transmit it to his daughter who's going to be a carrier most likely and the daughter can have an affected son. But if, it is a, if that man's sister has the same chromosome which is inactivated in the sister, that sister's son can have technically, genetically have a learning disorder because of that chromosome or that gene being transmitted. So this is the genetics when it is X-linked, if this is what your question was. But again, please remember, it's not that uh, only boys have learning disability. We do have plenty of girls with learning disability. And uh, it is not that these genes uh, specifically are there in every child with learning disability. If for any reason we have done a genetic analysis and have found the X chromosome being affected because of this, this is how the future transmission is going to be. Did I answer your I question? Think, yeah, I think genetics. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you so much. I think genetics is not so important as far as, I mean, as far as prognosis of uh, learning disorders is concerned, unless the child has a, there's no biomarkers for learning disability anyway. There is a lot of, uh, about 16, 6 to 16% various studies show that there is genetics as far as learning disability. If parents are learning disabled, there is a chance 16 to 16% of the child having a learning disability. But how much genetics is going to be useful in prognosticating how this child will do is something that uh, requires more study. I don't think we need to go into genetics at all as far as learning disability is concerned. Like if it is a biomarker, like or, 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 like um, uh, you know, you have a biomarker for uh, for fragile X or you have a, re a tuberous sclerosis. Those are useful for deciding on therapy. But as far as learning disability is concerned, I don't think genetics has so much importance as in other conditions. Uh, if there are no other questions, uh, I'll uh, hand over to Dr. Abraham Paul for... Uh, I, I would like to first of all thank all my panelists. Sir. Uh, fantastic job, Suja. You did a great job. Uh, uh, Susan, fantastic. Mabel, Mabel Mendes and Shoba. You are all uh, excellent. I think you all were a little apprehensive about how it will go, but you have done a great job with this today's session. Thank you so much. Over to Abraham Paul for the final. Uh, in fact, we've uh, aimed this uh, mainly for the parents and I am happy that about uh, 40 plus parents have joined and uh, they have benefited and all the speakers have done excellently well. I congratulate all the four panelists and Dr. Jason for excellently moderating the session and I think the bottom line is that whenever a child has a poor school performance, he should be evaluated. I think probably we can detect or suspect the problem when he's in the first, second or the third standard. And the moment you suspect a problem, intelligent child not doing well in the class should be evaluated properly 
by a multidisciplinary team. And not to forget, about 80% of children with the poor school learning disability have ADHD or attention deficit hyperactive disorder, which is causing a major problem. And they should be treated. And if pharmacotherapy is indicated, should be given to these children, and there should be any bias in giving pharmacotherapy. And uh, I think this session is very useful for the pediatrician as well as for the parents. And thank you very much, Dr. Suja, uh, Mabel, Shoba, and uh, Susan for the excellent talk, and Mabel for the excellent talk they have given. Thank you so much. Over to Dr. Pramod. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, so a few announcements. One is that uh, this uh, presentation has been recorded and it will be available on the IEP Coaching Branch YouTube channel for further reference. And uh, please don't hesitate to share with everybody. And then um, I, I, I'll be proposing the word of thanks in the absence of the secretary. I, I'm very happy that uh, this uh, session on uh, learning disability uh, was attended by a lot of parents and teachers. And I thank uh, Suja K. Nair, Mabel Mendes, Shoba Maman, uh, Maman, sorry, and Dr. Susan Sakria for the excellent presentation and Dr. Jason Siuni for, uh, for moderating the session. And I thank you, uh, thank uh, Dr. Abraham K. Paul and uh, Dr. Maranan, uh, State President. And uh, thank you all for attending and uh, good night. I'll be winding up the meeting now. Good night. Thank you. Good night.